Hey guys, I'm Rachel Castile and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about living in alignment with truth. I'm going to kind of expand into kind of four points that's on my heart. Um, letting truth shape you, letting truth guide you, and making room in your heart, in your soul, in your mind for truth to be revealed to you and um, kind of what that looks like. So this is something God has been walking uh, me through lately just in everyday life, um, that truth is a rested place or is revealed to you in rest. And, um, it challenges everything that I find myself operating in or things that have seemed to be normal to me. Uh, God is kind of nudging me to be still, to sit back and to, um, to acknowledge my value in a rested state and in that place god's refining so many different things things that aren't true are being brought up to the surface and uh brought to the light and um it's getting removed out of me and it's causing me to see my value more and more and um the truth of God's perspective towards me is what is beginning to define me at a greater level that I'm starting to know my value more and more in every situation, my value to others, my value just, um, I keep saying a rested state because I think that is where we know God, you know, be still and know that I am God. That's when we come into knowing is in being still within ourselves, um, that God's bringing us to a place of surrender of the things that aren't serving us anymore, that aren't serving us in this next season. Um, they've brought us to the point, you know, they brought us to today to where we are now, but, um, that aren't actually beneficial going forward. And yeah, so this is what God's really been speaking to me about this week is just allow truth to shape you, allow truth to guide you. Um, truth alone is enough. Um, you don't have to prove something that's true. You have to prove something that's a lie. You have to overprove it, but when you're operating in truth, you should be able to rest in it and know that truth is what will defend you, you know, um, that you don't have to defend yourself. When you rest in something that's true, you get to just sit in it. You get to just be in it and operate from it. And, uh, yeah, so this is a bit of an unfolding thing going on in my life right now. And, um, uh, yeah, it's, it comes down to every moment, really, at any given point, um, whenever we're operating in the, in the truth of our identity and the truth of our purpose, um, and whatever we're doing, if it's just doing work, doing what we're called to do, doing uh, just all the tasks of life, being in relationships, um, yeah, just going about our day, um, God is giving us an opportunity to enter into a real upgrade in our, in our identity, in how we see ourselves and how we see others. Um, God is bringing us into a deeper place of rest to reveal to us deeper truths about ourselves. And um, I just am hearing like an increased expectancy, like to, to raise your expectation, to hear something from God in this time. Um, like going to, going to the mailbox, knowing that a package is coming, like to, to have that expectancy of something's on its way and to make room for that, to, um, yeah, really make room with that for that with your attention, with your time, with your focus and uh rest with expectancy for an upgrade and perception and 
in the way you've assessed things because the next move of God, it really is us knowing who we are and operating from that upgrade of revelation. I spoke about this some in my last video and it's a bit more of the same um, that it's not going to be something outside of ourselves. It's, it's not going to be some group or some community or some, you know, move of God as you know, we've seen in the past or, you know, it, it's really going to be as we come to know what we are and that becomes the deepest rooted thing in us that everything else that ever identified us gets ripped up, gets pulled out, gets undone. Whenever we really are rooted in truth, we begin to do what that person would be doing. Right. Um, on, on, I would say every level like this, it applies to some of the simplest things, but it also applies on big, big levels, you know? Um, we're called to heal. We're called to cast out demons. We're caused to set the cap. We're called to, to set the captives free. And, um, God is asking us, prompting us, drawing us to himself to reveal to us the truth of who we are. And that starts with allowing God to take out of our hands what we're already used to operating in, what we're used to navigating our life with. And uh, yeah, this is very present for me. I'm watching God do this to me day by day by day. That literally in a moment, God's like, you know, you don't have to do that anymore, right? Like, what am I doing? You're trying to fill in the space. You're trying to know what you're going to say. You're, you're, what's the best way to say that? You're creating a response. And God's like, you know, you can just express yourself. Do you know that you're enough? Do you know that you don't have to perform that? You don't have to do that anymore. You know that you can be true to your own instincts, to your own what your heart needs in this moment. You can be still. You don't have to you don't have to produce something until you really want to, right? Until your heart really is wanting to give something. To let the real bubble up cause you to speak. You don't have to feel bad about moving at the pace of truth. And I call this truth, this it's what is what is your truth? What is true for you in the sense of it's like multi-layered. I'm using this word truth, but honest, authentic. What is honest for you right now? And staying true to that honest place. And as you move from where you are to another place, you can be honest about that place and live from that place. But the only way to grow in that honest place of truth is to acknowledge what is true about you right now and to occupy, abide in, present it to the light. You must be in what is true at all times to grow. You cannot grow um, behaving in a cover up of your actual heart condition, your actual thoughts of your mind, of every aspect of yourself. This is, this is the mix. So there's truth that God's wanting to reveal to you. 
And in order for you to receive, you have to actually be you. You have to present yourself. You have to, what's the best way of saying that? Present yourself as in, you have to really approach as you right now where you are in the realness of your life, in the realness of your thoughts, in the realness of your emotion, in the realness of your current state. And um, in that place to still open your eyes and open your heart and say, God, what do you want to show me today? Whatever it is, are you wanting to show me something about myself? Are you wanting to show me something about other people, about um, what's going on around me, something in my community? What do you want me to see that I'm not seeing? What do you want to comment on about something that I believe? So, yeah, the two sides of truth. There's the truth of being honest with God, living honest before God and man and with yourself and being open and allowing the spirit of truth, our mother, Holy Spirit, to reveal herself to you, to reveal you to you and to reveal I guess going into revealing you to you, our creator knows what they created better than our self-assessment. And that is the upgrade is allowing God to reveal you to you. The core of your being, the core of who you were created to be. Allow God to stir that up and to bring that forth and to break off every thing you've ever identified with that God knows isn't the core of who you are. It's an aspect of something that you've learned to operate in or you've identified yourself by, but God's saying that's not your truest identity. That's not the truest statement of who you are. It's something that life has taught you. That life has taught you that you need to do those types of behaviors. You need to interact that way. Things of that nature. God wants to reveal you to you. And that's something we we trust the spirit of truth to do in our lives. We grow as we allow God to speak to us. To turn the light on in a new area. God is gracious. God is merciful. God is patient. God knows what we can handle today. What... um we can process today. God knows, hey, it's time. You'll be able to deal with this. You'll be able to receive an upgrade in this area without getting defensive or, you know, it's time to see this. It's time to startle you in this area because we've got to launch this new uh, project in your heart. We've got to move this stuff out of your mind. It's not benefiting you anymore. This is what my life experiences are doing to me right now. As I walk my days out with God, as I'm... Uh, driving people around town, around the area. Um, It's been really great. I'm seeing a lot more on a lot of levels. And 
I need every day that I'm walking out right now. I need every experience I'm having. I'm needing. I'm needing to see what I'm seeing. And on the path with Holy Spirit, we're presented with two options. We're presented with what we're used to creating for ourselves. And we can recreate that reality as we're going about our day. Or we can see what this is to teach us that would unhook us from the ways we normally do things. The ways we normally interpret things. And that's why I speak to, we have to allow truth, the space to speak into every moment. Like, what is this about? Oh, you're trying to bring me beyond the realm of my control so I can surrender and realize I don't even, I don't even need that right now. It's not helping me or I want you to see something new about yourself in this moment. I want to see what, you, I want you to see what you carry. I want you to see um, your positive impact when you're not trying to steer things where you need it to go or where you think it should go. And I want you to see that things are exactly the way they should be. And that everyone in this situation is getting to encounter God if you let go and allow it. So it's at every moment we have that opportunity to see what God is wanting to do in, in the experiences we have in everything, literally every moment, every interaction, every appointment, everything that we go to, I, I realize like we can summarize things in a way that we normally do or literally everything can be can be re what's that word like reassessed like what we see or what we choose how we choose to interpret things fully impacts our lives like it affects our mental state our attitudes our um I think the best core thing is like, we're not receiving all that God wants us to have because of our contentment with creating what we're used to over and over and over and over and over and almost making sure to keep things that way. I don't know. We're all wired differently, but I think that applies across the board. I believe that that's true for all people in the sense that, um, we are the creators within our own story and we are creating the reality that we live in every single day. We are ensuring the things we don't want don't happen and the things that we do want happens in a sense. And yeah, so I guess kind of inclusion in conclusion, like God is just saying, make room for me, allow me to speak, allow me to reveal to you who you are, allow me to give you new visions, to awaken new purposes in you, to fill you with my heart, with my thoughts, that in union with me, my will will be done on the earth. My will will be done in your life. And God is raising us up to touch other people through the peace and rest that we walk in, in the truth of who we are. That your upgrade and identity becomes the upgrade of everyone around you as well because it starts to overflow. And this is such a real place of, of rest. It's a real place of fruitfulness, abiding in actual love for yourself. 
when you're receiving the love of God, it qualifies you for everything written in your destiny. It qualifies you. You, you come to a place of knowing that you are, you are the person in the visions. That's what I'm experiencing one day at a time. And it's a process. It's a process. And, uh, I'm gonna keep sharing from this very real place in my life right now. I'm learning something new about myself and I'm starting to have new things I can give to people from a genuine place and not a place of performance, not a place of trying to be a good person, trying to be Christ like to people. That a lot of times what God is speaking is to me first, it's, you know, we were never called to be sons who give to people, but never receive. And I, I understand we all have different deficits or patterns of things we're doing that needs to be surrendered to God. But this is something that God's speaking to me that God wants to meet my needs and wants me to be honest about what they are and to stay in the truth of that space that my needs are getting met. That I'm not breaking from love myself ever. I'm never called to minister or to go in love without being in love myself. My first assignment is to abide and to receive and to live honestly before the Lord, to live knowing that I am enough knowing that I am enough. That what is authentic to you is enough. And in that place, that's where the lies get uprooted. But if you never reveal that place, or you never abide in that place, or you never expose it to the light, it doesn't get nurtured. Your mask gets nurtured, but not you. And everything we're called to do is to flow out of the true nurturing of the real you. So if you're doing ministry, you're out doing and being to other people. And the real you isn't making contact with God. The real you isn't in the room. Then that pattern and that behavior of even behaving or living that way, that you, all the momentum you have behind that has to be halted to a point that you stop operating in that for the real you to ever have a chance. Because it's like, it's a, it's a muscle. It's, one muscle stronger than the other one. The other one's really weak. And the more you overuse the one you shouldn't use, it all the more. That's that's what God's wanting to do is to halt and to uproot and say, you've had all this momentum behind this other thing and that you will you give that to me? It's not for your good anymore. 
And I just pray that God, you know, quickens in you, gives you the courage to bring the real you forward. To tell the truth you need to tell. What does your soul need to speak? What does your soul need to say? To know that God wants to hear from you. God wants. Wants you to know that is what he longs for. And as you do it. Will set you free more and more, more and more. God is wanting to nurture the real you, the real you. God is committed to nurture the real you every day. If you'll bring the real you, she'll get fed, she'll get clothed. What your real heart needs to hear, you'll get spoken to. But if the performing you shows up, everything that happens in the day doesn't touch the real you. And the real you is malnourished, cold, and sick. But the days that mother has designed for you is to nourish, nurture, and comfort the essence of who you are. Because she knows your heart. She knows what you need. And she just wants you to be honest. And you'll see the path is designed for your healing, for your restoration of your value and your worth of truth to be revealed to the depths of your being. Whatever it is, maybe it's safety related. Maybe it's knowing that it's okay for you to be all that you are. We're all wired differently and need to hear something different than other people. But God knows what you need to hear. And God is calling you to make room for truth to be revealed. And as you're honest about what you really need, what you're struggling with, what your heart is longing for, You, in telling the truth, you also need to make space for a response. And let that expectancy rise in you for an actual response. That it's coming. That God heard you and wants to speak into that each and every day of your life. God wants to heal you. God wants to transform you. That you're no longer living in torment. God wants to solidify truth in you so much that when the enemy comes to torment you with something, the truth totally exposes that, that it doesn't have the effect it used to have. You know, um, the enemy can taunt us with what we don't know and like agitate or stir up our doubts and our worries and our fears and our, our, our insecurities. But in relationship with God, our insecurities get dealt with, our doubts get dealt with. We start to become certain of truths that our soul needs to know. Our soul begins to know it. And then there is no such thing as being attacked. We don't focus on the enemy anymore. 
when sons know their sonship, the enemy knows that sons know their sonship and they start to run from the sons. Cause it's like, man, it's too late for that one. They already know. They know who they are. I can't lie to them anymore. I can't say, hey, if you do this, your dad will love you. They're like, I already know that my dad loves me. I don't have to do something to get him to love me because I already know his love. You can only do that to sons who don't know their father. You can lie on the father. You can lie on the father's character. You can't do that with sons who know. In relationship. And to come to a place of knowing, we have to surrender what we already know so God can speak into it and reveal truth. We have to humble ourselves and present everything we think is true so God can speak into it. So yeah, um, that's where I'm at right now. That's what God's doing in me. One day at a time. And got some loose skin on my lip. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what God's doing. Um, untethering me from things I ain't got to do no more. God's uprooting shame, biggest thing in my life. More than fear. This goes back into the Enneagram and it's just true. But shame by far is the deepest thing I've dealt with. Just a general sense of unworthiness. Of not being good enough or um, not feeling that what I am is enough. Or pride. That's been my thing. I'm an Enneagram too, for those who know the Enneagram. Oh, either an overinflated thing or the opposite of shame. Both of them are empty. Both of them lack truth. And the truth is setting me free to be at rest. Learn to be okay with what with what is honest for you. God's been showing me if everything that comes out of my mouth is true. When I speak, when I'm being, I'm being true to my emotional state. I'm being true to just a true display that's not a cover. That will be my influence on the people around me. If I'm unwilling to walk in the truth... People around me are like, why should I show you something true when I when you're being fake? Why would I take my time to give you something true when you're not giving me something true yourself? You know, and this is how our influence is. It's like if 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 nothing I say is true, how can I expect other people to be honest with me? You know, how can I expect someone to reveal their true selves to me? If I'm not revealing my true self to the world around me as I operate, you know, this is what God's talking to me about stripping everything down to the raw place because in raw as in it's not raw, but it feels raw because we don't operate in this place normally and it shouldn't be the case. This is the weaker thing. It's so many layers. I think is the best way to say it. God is peeling the layers back because it's not conscious all the time. There's so many levels of protection layered upon another layer upon another layer. Like, we might not even have memory of operating any different than the way we do. And God has to reveal to us how far we are from the authentic. 
we have to make room for God to speak into our souls, to show us that. We have to invite Holy Spirit in. Not in a moment, but in a life. To do life with Holy Spirit in every moment. I I don't say this in pride or something, but like, yes, that's, this is my heart. Like, I live with Holy Spirit every moment. And every day when Holy Spirit is speaking into deeper things, I could look back and be like, oh, wow, I didn't walk with Holy Spirit like this. And that's what it should be like every single day. A relationship is growing and growing and growing and getting closer and closer. More honest and more real, more transparent every single day. And there's so many lies of what a moment takes. Oh, it takes this of me. It takes this of me. It takes this of me. It's like, no, it just takes you being you. That's been a lie. You've been saying it takes all these other things layered upon just being. And it was just being all along. But I see life showed you that. And that's what you need to surrender to God right now is all those things you think it takes in order for you to show up. Let all that stuff just start frying in the fire of God. Just let it burn off as it's coming out of me. Like I've, I've had so much. I say, man, so much came out of me in my last season. So much is coming out of me in this season. Stuff that's not serving my purpose, not serving my things that's less than love. Anything that's less than loving Rachel has to go. If I fell in love with my ability to do something, that's not being. And all that, God is uprooting it. Again, I said it's a big topic. And I just want to share a glimpse of what I'm seeing, experiencing, feeling, hearing, going through, that it would be a blessing to you. So I pray that this has been. Um, and again, I'm grateful for you stopping by the channel to listen to my thoughts, listen to what I'm hearing right now. And, uh, if you got value out of it, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And for future content, go ahead and subscribe below for the videos that are to come. And I'm starting to get a pretty decent library of things on this channel. So also feel free to go back and look through the videos. I've got a lot of different topics, um, things just from my testimony, things God has delivered me from, revealed to me. In a lot of different areas. So, yeah. All right, guys, that is it for this video, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.